They didn't even hardly change anything. They used the words, the everything, and just put it out. Like a leather leather boys with electric toys. Is that what that album's got? That's Carrie Doll's song. So all of those songs were not theirs. So the first show, I was trying to tell her, the first show they played, Pretty Boy Floyd, was opening for Fatal Attraction. And it was our third show as vampires. And we're playing at the Roxy. And it was a really good turnout, but it was sold out. We're like, how we, how we, how did that happen? Well, the guys opening for us, everybody got tickets. So it was like, you know, these guys gave away. And it doesn't take much to sell out the Roxy. It's only a couple hundred or a few hundred. So we're like, holy crap, who are these guys? They got, you know, Marshall Stacks. All their equip equipment's new. They got roadies. They got special effects. They've got buttons and shirts. And no one's ever heard of them. And then when they start playing, I'm like, Wait a minute, that song is Carrie Doll's song. And then so is the next, and the next. So I went up to one of them, I'm like, dude, where'd you guys come from? Oh, we're back east. You bull. So I found out. And so eventually, they were sued. They lost. They had to pay out a lot of money to Carrie and Ariel and whoever else they ripped the songs off of. And Carrie Doll actually put out an album with his version of all of those songs with the money that he got from the lawsuit so she's just trying to say how this girl i know katrina she's helped me write she she's a lyricist for me <laughs> and she was like going on about pretty boy floyd and i'm like no it's poser boy floyd they're totally fake and i started pissing her off so she told me to shut up <laughs> i'm like fine i'm not gonna say any more about poser boy floyd I just wanted to let you know that they were fake. And they are fake. Fake, fake, fake. And the amazing thing is they're still trying to do it. They're still out there playing. And I guess the drummer died. I didn't I, I don't think know if it's the original drummer or not. I mean it's just amazing that anybody is still playing in a fake band. I mean I know like Backstreet Boys and all those but that was, you know, they weren't hiding it. It was a manufactured thing. Everybody thought Kiss was, but they weren't. Everybody thought, every, you know, every all of these. But Pretty Boy Floyd was. They had tons of money. They were all living in friggin' like multi, just condos right off the strip. And we're like, what the, who are these guys? And they never played. They played the Roxy. They played the Troubadour. They played some junk place down in San Pedro, uh, the Waters Club. Because I know it's junk because I used to play there. But me and my bass player went down there to see him because he, you know, my bass player was gay. So he was going to try to, you know, he liked, I think, the bass player. So I'm like, all right, let's go. And I don't know what happened. <laughs> but, uh. I got, you know, blondes have more fun, I guess. As I, from what I remember, that guy was blonde, and that's what Tony like. But you know, Tony was my like my brother. I miss that guy, man. He was so cool. He was the greatest guy in the world. I miss Tony, man. I miss him. But uh, there you go. Then I got a tribute page to him, Tony Rydell uh, tribute page. Coolest guy in the world. Coolest friggin' dude in the world. Uh, yeah, he's died in 94. It's been, oh man, it's been that long. He's got two brothers, his parents are dead. That's a sad story. We don't want to end on sad. Let's end on happy. Pretty Boy Floyd sucks. <laughs> and uh, there you go. And here's the other thing. And when I talk about Randy Rhodes, I want it to be positive all the time. And I don't want to talk about him so much because I really didn't know him that well. I wasn't buddies with him. I was a lot closer to Craig Turner and Drew Forsyth. Those guys. Not George Lynch. And this thing were... were I don't know if I should get this deep. But people are talking for Randy now. 
saying that he thought that George Lynch was the best guitar. If Randy thought that, he kept it to... I mean, George Lynch is good. But to me, all I saw was a mini Eddie Van Halen. Everybody was a mini Eddie Van Halen after Van Halen got signed. And George would just jump on to trends. He was a trend jumper. And he always had the 12-year-old boy haircut. That bugged me. He was a great guitarist, but he never had a good tone. And he just dr jumped on trends. He didn't set trends. He's an absolutely incredible guitar player. Blows my ass away, of course. Who doesn't? But he's not a trend setter. He's a trend chaser or follower. There you go. That's it. That's enough. See ya. Subscribe. I'm getting close to a thousand. It's all I need is a thousand subscribers. And then I will never say it again. And then uh, like it if you like. Comment. Please comment so I know that you're liking the talking and not the playing. I know. I understand it. I get it. I get it. You can see a million guys play guitar a lot better than me. So there you go. I just thought I'd bring something out different that I haven't played in a couple of years and uh, see how many people uh, bash the thing because they think they don't know what they're talking about. All right. See you later, man. Till next week. I do. Metal!